Oh, this is some good moss. Look at that. Was cataloged as lifeless because of a hyperspace disaster. Oh. Yet this planet, <laughs> Brendock is thriving. A virgin could create life like what we see on this planet. Oh. It's a power that should be studied. Are we at least confirming that they didn't come here for this reason? Yeah. That's it. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm, I, I already feel vindicated that the Jedi aren't, weren't doing anything malicious. You know, yeah. whatever happened is is just something that went wildly out of whack. So we just got done with episode seven of the Acolyte. Huge, huge revelations. <laughs> just the implications came Those out. The implications before the credits it came out to thirty eight minutes, and I keep telling Disney and everyone else. They need to cook. They need longer episodes. This was on the longer side on average, and it was all the better for it. And we got so much. Chaka, what did we get? Vindicated. <laughs> um, I, I was I was right about a lot of stuff, and that makes me smile a little bit. But <laughs> but one of the big things is you know seeing. I, I mean, I, I've been saying it from the beginning that this was giving a lot of um, putting a lot of interesting thoughts about the Jedi uh, and and their role in the galaxy and, and and what are they doing. And it's actually some people have tried to like manipulate into this is the Jedi being evil, yeah. but as we got to see here, there's no evil intent. There's no evil actions, but there are consequences to every action, whether evil or not. It was really cool being able to see like the other, the other side of it, because when you look at Soul's perspective, of course he thought bad things were going to happen to this these kids. And by the way, what is that even? Bad things were going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So we saw Coral go into this black cloud misty thing. And then we got the Kelnaka situation where he went on a rampage. Indara, I know you would prefer to what is so. with those two moons. But I insist. What is this? Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, I heard a Kylo Ren theme yeah. as well. Dude, every Jedi will be unstoppable. Jesus. How do you fight that? So what is that thing? You were just saying uh, NSA was going into this black cloud. So what was she trying to do? Do you think that the Ascension is to mark them so that they could go into the black cloud and essence transfer? into a new body I, I i that's what i that's what i think is happening i think it's a way to have um like a complete transference you know i can't help but think that that might be what what the stranger is is a witch having done this to someone else and that's what i've been you know that's what i was saying earlier kind of puts it kind of puts a twist on our current theory about chimer uh vernestra's old padawan but somewhere along the way there was a transfer Right. So here's what we've discovered so far to answer a lot of questions that have been asked throughout this entire show. The Jedi were not there to abduct children. They were not there on purpose to invade this coven. They were there to survey the, the planet. It was uninhabited. They were searching for a virgins and soul happened upon children who looked like they were in danger. You know, we talk about Rash Oman all the time. And from his point of view, they're being trained and they're being pushed. And like, there's a lot of these, like from his point of view, it looks like they're in danger. As he pleads his case to Indara, Indara is looking like the most reasonable person. Again, when we, when we saw NSA, no, oh, she's really reasonable. When we saw Indara the first time, she was like, oh, she's kind of overstepping, but she is actually the reasonable one in this scenario and, and she's just like she's a master true and true in this episode and in, in, in my mind also goes back to um you know watching tales of the jedi remember how uh we had the count dooku uh with mace windu episode where 
it was clear to both Mace Windu and Dooku that there was some sort of treachery afoot, you know, that their, their Jedi Master Katri didn't die. Uh, like something happened. Dooku wanted to investigate. Mace wanted to, you know, send the body back to the council and talk to them before investigating. And Mace Windu got a lot of hate for that, for being like, hey, this this was the mission. We should, we should, you know, seek guidance. And it's funny because the whole the only difference is they survived <laughs> their encounter. You know what I mean? Um, and this is what we see, especially, especially if you're a fan of Anakin. Anakin's always running off and doing what's in his heart, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We can now see examples of when what is in your heart can lead to catastrophic conclusions. Uh, where a more measured approach would have probably been a lot better. Apparently, like essentially, if the Jedi had done nothing, Osha would have come with them, and there still would have been treachery afoot. Whatever, <laughs> whatever the witches were doing. Ah, oh, I loved this episode. This this might be this is this is probably my favorite episode. Oh, absolutely the 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 insane lore drop of the virgins, the power to create life. In this revelation that they're not twins, like twins have different symbionts, like it's 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 fantasy sci science, right? So like we're not gonna yeah. get into the biology of things, but like in this universe, twins have different symbionts, and in this case, they have one, which means they're they they are one consciousness split. So that revelation alone kind of puts new theories into our brains as to how they were created we still don't know what the machine is it could very well just be a generator for power but they panned on the two moons as they were explaining the the virgins and the force and um what this planet symbolizes love the call back to the the hyperspace disaster pour it out to head a cassette yeah. um our our favorite the uh, space lady trucker but there's still something there underneath it all Again, like the Russian doll, with all of these revelations, there's still questions. So the one that lingers is how were they created? Why were they created? What, how does Chimere fit into all of this? Why does the Kylo Ren theme keep on inserting itself? We're left with that. The M count is very high, extremely high, very false sensitive. Even identical twins would have different symbionts. This is impossible without some kind of manipulation. This is our ticket home! Stop him! He'll knock in and take the ship! Oh, Torben. Where does all of this lead to? I'm, I'm curious, if it's one consciousness split into two, whose, whose consciousness was it? Was it Mother Anasea's, like herself? Is it how she prolongs her life mm. by sending her consciousness into a younger body? And then just being the next leader, you know, I mean, I feel it's, it's actually pretty similar to, to what so I've been feeling this whole time. This is the first time I'm actually saying it out loud. Something similar happened on uh, the foundation. <laughs> did you, oh, did yeah. you watch the foundation or read yeah. it? Yeah. You, yeah. We had that, that person that would know, jump into other people's minds and that's what their whole, that's what their whole shtick was. And um, it would be really cool if that actually is the influence because George took a lot from the foundation. I do want to, I do want to reiterate the, the whole kind of trying to paint the Jedi as evil in contrast, trying to exonerate the coven as well. And I keep like in our earlier conversations with, um, folks in the community who said that they need the Jedi to, be culpable, be culpable and they also don't think that the coven did anything wrong and i was my pushback to that obviously was you can't really exonerate them too early like we don't know a lot about them so it's like to to want the jedi who we know a lot about to be culpable which is in, which it's in their um capacity right you know they have a lot of flaws but to exonerate the coven of no wrongdoing is very, very hasty as a judgment. Cause we don't know anything about them, what their goals are. And it looks like, you know, there's a lot of shady stuff that happens with them. Um, and the only person still that is reasonable throughout all of this was Anasea tragic that she had to die the way she did. And, but that still doesn't make soul an evil person. 
or acting with malice. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you're 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 very <laughs> right. I, I'm my my mind is is thinking of um, I mean, Saul obviously didn't act with malice. Uh, but when he saw Mother Anasea started turning into uh, a smoke monster, um, the difference was May started to dissimulate as, as well. Yeah. No! Whoa, what is... So that, that's not what happened with, with Kilnaka, right? So that's that's something that's interesting. Because is that if if Osha got to her marking, do you think it would have been on the other side of her head? And that when you mix them both together, it's the center, like Mother Anasea. Yeah. You think she the she ab just she just absorbs them, and that's how she keeps going. I think um, so. And that's that's kind of where I'm leaning. And this this was you know truly protecting that child, and that's what the this whole I mean the the, the poem that they say to each other all the time it's about be being one go back to episode three where nsa is demonstrating the power of many but during her demonstration she her she alone fights off four people so it's like i i think you're on to something in which the power of many <laughs> the power of many turns into the power of one when she assimilates those that have been um, ascended. Uh, and this is the power of many. And then she like, she fights off the many. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's not really, um, <laughs> it doesn't really track, but yeah, I think you're right about that. I think there is an end game. And then you compare that to episode six, where we saw the power of Manny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So still a lot of mysteries to, to, to be unraveled. We still have Chimere's place in all of this and how the coven um, has affected him um, because he was around. He has seemingly the same power as uh, Coral and Anasea with getting in their head. We'll have to wait can, and can see. Can we also talk about the power of that, um, of Mother Anasea? Because... She's straight up like Sukunomiya, uh, <laughs> the homeboy. Yeah, you know? yeah, she did. Uh, she's doing this Your master denied already. You. She's kind of bad, man. Like badass. She's sounding a lot like he does to uh, Osha, and an illusion inside of their mind and tortures them for several days uh, there's a full-on conversation and and i i highly doubt that what we saw was 100 percent of it you know but this is all while she's holding a conversation like that's that's crazy the last thing that i want to talk about is soul's decision soul's very own trolley problem obviously he did something wrong was he in the position to save them both because it looks like he was running out of stamina and he chose to save one. And this is going to yeah. become like a moral quandary across the community. I feel like and it's a good conversation to have. But at first he wanted to save both. He was running out of stamina. And it could have resulted in the loss of both. If he had not made a decision. So how are we treating Soul's decision? Oh. Uh, You called that one too. Oh, I called. This is all just like cluster fluff, man. This it's gonna be fascinating um, to see how the reaction to that is because I, I'm sure people are not gonna factor in the the fact that he literally just climbed up a mountain. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he climbed up a mountain and then he fought a Jedi Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. Uh, and, and and a crazy witch lady. And they ran in and, and caught both of the platforms, right? Now, I know it's going to say, well, why didn't you just catch both the, both of them? I, I don't know that it's how easy it is to focus on two things at the same time. You have to put yourself in their shoes. In that moment, he chooses to support the platforms. He could have possibly lifted both of them and brought them to... Um, 
safety. But if we think about just like that knee jerk reaction, he chose to stop the platforms. And in that case, that was it. We have to consider what it would take for him to let go and come back to both of them. But we see what happens as soon as he lets go, something falls and he needs both of his, like his full focus to keep OSHA um, from falling. I mean, honestly, I think he, I more than anything else, I think he just had nothing left. I think, uh, you know, if he hadn't done what he'd done, he wouldn't have been able to get over to either of them in time. He had to physically catch her. Help me. I got you. Right? He didn't catch her with the force. He had to run over there and dive in order to save her. And he was only able to hold up the platform long enough to get over there in time. You know, at least that, that's that's how how I see it is is happening. I think if he had tried to hold up both, he would have dropped both and caught neither. And that's the moral quandary that we're gonna be discussing. Obviously, the consequence of not doing what he did would have resulted in both of them being lost. The quandary now remains is the decision, the choice yeah. of who between the two. And obviously, he's biased. We're, we're, it's clear that he's biased. He wants to save OSHA. In so choosing is where the quandary happens, right? It's like... I mean, it, 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 it is the... Tr I mean, it just is the trolley problem, right? He chose to switch the tracks, which means yeah. it, it hit someone, you know? It, but that was his choice. Yeah. Is, is Anakin no longer special? He, he, listen... <laughs> I, I saw I saw a little part of you die inside <laughs> just now. Yes. The force created him. Um, I know that George Lucas said his or his origin would never be revealed. And it's it's up to the fans to interpret it, but if we're if we're gonna establish an origin that is both consistent with headcanon and consistent with canon, with zero contradictions, the force created him. That's it. The Force created him. He is an absolute virgin in the Force. Nothing manipulated that. Like, Shmi was like, oh, oh, okay, I'm pregnant. And in this case, there was manipulation, right? They showed us the M counts, the scan. They showed us that the symbiont was the same. So there was clear manipulation of, of virgins. And there's still some lingering questions about the methodology but it's clear that this was not immaculate. This is not something that the Force did. This is a perversion, just like this, the dark side is a perversion, unnatural. It's part of the experiments that have been ongoing, even in Legends, with Tenebris, Venomous, and, uh, and Plagueis. So within this time, in this continuity, even in Legends, the manipulation of life is happening it happening now in this show should not be in any way shape or form a problem yeah i mean we already have joris sabayoth um we have luke already we have snoke already we had that uh, jack 14 we even had skippy the jedi droid um but people have been trying to artificially create force sensitives for for a long time and what plagueis was trying to learn how to do is uh let's extend his own life you know um in in legends i mean that's that was the primary goal uh, but the weird part the weird part though is a the chosen one prophecy like read the prophecy and tell me how this affects it it doesn't doesn't um anyone who complains about it hasn't read the prophecy <laughs> <laughs> even if you do that's read good. the prophecy you can't really it's like it's 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 not one-to-one -one, like uh, exactly N not only that but He's a chosen one because of what he did, because of the life that he led and the actions that he took. That's that's a whole other side of it. Yeah, it's it's stupid. I just had to bring it up because I know I'm going to hear a bunch of it <laughs> this week. There's people out there that will, you know, perpetuate the, the lore breaking, the canon breaking aspects of the show. You know, week after week, it has been proven that the show knows how to answer those questions, knows how to clean it up and wrap it up nicely. And the whole kind of manipulation of the symbionts, uh, them not being twins, it's all there. 
it's a, it's clearly a perversion of the force and it has nothing to do with any kind of immaculate divinity with with Anakin and it all matches up with the experiments that Plagueis and Tenebris are doing throughout this time so so none of it is breaking you're only mad about it because it's witches and not Tenebris and Plagueis like outright but we know that they're there in the shadows doing things it it matches nothing is broken yet Kiari Mundi still doesn't know that there's that that Chimer exists. Wait until next week. They're going to wrap things up and it, they're going to clean it up nicely. And we're going to get all of our answers. Nothing is going to break in. And that'll do it for this reaction and breakdown of episode seven, the penultimate episode of the Acolyte. More questions remain, more mysteries um, arise, even with all of the answers that we got in this episode. Be sure to tune in on Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific for Diet of the Force, where we will talk about it in more in depth and take a deeper dive into the lore of the show and Star Wars. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to turn on notifications so you know when we post new videos. But that's it. On to the next one. For life, for life. We are all smoke monsters <laughs> and may mother anisea haunt your dreams i don't know if that's a blessing or a curse <laughs> it's a blurse.